I joined the Air Force because my dad was in and I grew up around the Air Force and it's something that I always really wanted to do. I always found it really interesting and I also got a lot from the Air Force. Like I applied for a scholarship through them and I got a scholarship for college that paid for my books and I was always really thankful for that. So it was a combination of wanting to give back to the Air Force, wanting to serve my country and growing up with it. I'll be in the Air Force. It'll be two years in October. So in about a month now. And I've actually only had my specific job for a year of that. The technical name for my job is acquisitions manager, but my duty title is program manager, but go into more detail of what that is in a couple of questions. Um, and the AFSC is 63 alpha. As you heard in the last question, I'm an officer. I didn't go enlisted. So our process is a little bit different. You know your job before you go to your training. So I did know my job before I went to Maxwell. So no, this job wasn't what I wanted to do. I actually had no idea what this job was. I had never heard of it. I mean, I guess I heard of it because I put it on my sheet, but I filled out my job sheet very last minute because I did, I did ROTC, I did ROTC and I did it a little different. I did a one year program, an accelerated program. They actually stopped doing it. They only had like 30 to 40 people in the nation that did it. And it was only um, if you were in your senior year of college and for that specific year. So I got really fortunate that I found that. But I had to fill out my form 53 really last minute and that's the form where you put all your jobs on it So I had no idea what acquisitions was I put it on there because I was a business major and there wasn't a lot of jobs that I could actually do So the job that I really wanted to do was public affairs I do photography and I also have a YouTube so I do videography and that's kind of what public affairs is I really thought the job was super interesting and I really wanted to do it but my hopes and dreams got crushed when I found out that there's hardly any people who get selected as public affairs and if you do you normally have a broadcast journalism degree so I didn't think that was going to happen but I really wanted that and then I also wanted to do something medical because my dad told me to work in the hospital because you'll get weekends and uh, holidays off. I get those anyways but yeah I wanted to work in the hospital. I am pretty sure that officers don't sign contracts. I'm pretty sure but you do commit to a base so I committed to honestly I don't know if it's three or four years they move us around a lot like every three or four years so you're you're bouncing around a lot so if you like moving and you were thinking about going officer or listed and you whatever go officer because most likely you'll move a lot more depending on what your job is of course and how many bases are available so I am at my first base Robins Air Force Base for either four or three years I'll move before if I can't remember I'm pretty sure it's four years but I'll be moving a little bit before that so I went to Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton Ohio if you are acquisitions Wright Pat is the biggest base for this job so so my tech school was only three weeks and another little tidbit about officers versus enlisted, the differences. If your tech school is less than six months, so if you're not like rated, so if you're not a pilot, RPA, CISO, whatever, you'll most likely, well not most likely, you will go to your base and then you'll go to tech school whenever a class opens up for you. So I just went to tech school and I had been at my base for 10 months and I didn't, yeah, so I didn't go to tech school before I started my job, which made this job a little bit weird and difficult and I didn't understand a lot, but that's being an officer for you, you don't. 
So for my job, I do work with a lot of civilians. So when I went to tech school, it was really refreshing to be around a bunch of other second lieutenants. And so to put it in perspective, my program office, I guess my unit that I work in is about 300 people and there's three second lieutenants or I guess there's three lieutenants including myself there's two seconds and one first and then the next we don't have any captains majors the next is a lieutenant colonel who is my supervisor and then a colonel who is our commander and then we have three four NCOs we actually got two new ones recently who we have master sergeant and senior master sergeants that we work with and they're not actually acquisitions. They're actually SMEs, which is a subject matter expert. For my specific job, acquisitions, you cannot go out of the continental US, so you cannot go to Alaska or Hawaii. There are big bases for acquisitions. So Wright Pat, LA, Hanscom, Robbins, Eglin, those are the big ones. Hill, Scott, and then there's a couple more that you can go to. So I know that we can go to Patrick. Like there's only a couple of positions at these bases. Patrick, if once you get to captain, you'll probably head to the Pentagon or well, actually no, once you get to like major or maybe senior captain, you'll be heading to the Pentagon if your career is going the way it should, um, you'll be heading to the Pentagon. There's also Edwards in California and I can't think of the other ones. I know that there's a couple more, but the ones that I listed uh, at first are the big ones. Okay, so my job is kind of hard to explain and understand. It took me a while to even understand what I was doing. So you are at a program office. And that program office can be aircraft related. Well, everything's, I guess, aircraft related in some way because we are the Air Force. But I specifically work in support equipment and vehicles. I specifically work on the MHU 196-204 program and I am the program manager. So I manage the cost schedule performance. Those are the three things that you are focused on. So everything you do is based around those three things. MHU, munitions handling unit. This trailer loads bombs onto B1, B2, and B52 bombers, which I haven't actually gotten the pleasure to experience yet. There's so many different things that go into this job. There's a timeline and different milestones so you can get a program that's at the very beginning where they're at milestone a or right before milestone a and this is when the program is i guess think of it as a, a human so it's like being birthed <laughs> and then milestone b and then milestone c like you do different things at each milestone to progress and right now we are working on we're doing a slep which is a service life extension program so we went through the trailer broke it down built it back up to write the to's for it the tech orders and we figured out what parts were obsolete and um what parts needed to be replaced so that we can ensure that we can keep this trailer serviceable because there are some parts on this trailer that aren't supported by dla anymore which dla is defense logistics agency and that is who you buy a lot of your parts from that's as much as i'm gonna get into my job it's it's a lot and i could go on and on about it but i hit the main things honestly the main thing is cost schedule performance Okay, so like I said earlier, you don't go to your tech school until a slot opens up for it. So a lot of the times you're going to be just like me going into this job, not having a single idea what it is, anything about it. So you're going to be given a lot of information. So be a sponge, just absorb as much as you can, take notes, and you're probably going to forget 80% of it. But just try and keep asking questions and if you don't know an acronym just ask don't feel stupid there are some acronyms that i use but i don't even know what they mean so then i'll be like what actually what what does that mean um also for my job it's a lot of putting out fires and constantly having to be reactive instead of proactive and it really sucks because you feel like you're always behind and you're always trying to fix things so just be aware that you're always kind of going to have to be dealing with something new and just know that ahead of time so that it's not such a shock. And yeah, so be a sponge. You're going to 
hear the term probably fire hose because they're just like it's so much coming at you but just try and learn as much as you can ask questions and you'll do you'll do good so if you would like to follow me on instagram my instagram handle is casey.melvin and then i also have a youtube channel where i talk specifically about my experience being in the air force as an officer the process that i went through and i try and post on there as often as i can but i've been really busy with my job and with life and everything so i haven't posted uh, as frequently as i should but yeah if you want to follow me it's just casey melvin on youtube so yeah thanks for watching